So Quilter AI is an AI tool that we employ AI techniques and algorithms to the solution of electronic components placement and routing of printed circuit boards. And uh, that's very unusual. It, some people would think of it as a little controversial, but it is kind of how the world is going right now. What sets Quilter apart in this kind of process is that there are many, many ideas to apply AI towards these problems, but there's issues with people's intellectual property, like you can't train an AI engine on everybody else's design or, or arguably even all the open source designs in the world using traditional well-known deep learning approaches. What sets Quilter apart is we can take somebody's design as a private piece of IP and we can launch hundreds of instances and apply the routing weights and algorithms to that, get all of those back and then learn from the results, which, which ones are the best, which ones pass physical design rule checks, which ones have the best uh, uh, signal integrity, power integrity. So we're using physics on the back end and yeah, it costs compute, but honestly for us, compute is not as expensive now as it was. It's very much available. So we're, we're leveraging uh, that capability and some, some very deep underst understanding amongst our software developers who are absolute gurus at this stuff. We're able to use that to, to return uh, a bunch of results and pick the results that are the best and that meet the customer's requirements. One of the key benefits of using placement and routing automation like Quilter is that what we found is, yes, there is still, and, and for quite some time, going to be a need for, for skilled, trained, human PCB layout developers and engineers. There's certain skills and problems humans can solve as Charles File pointed out in his keynote here at PCB West, that, that it's gonna take time before software is able to catch up with any of those nuanced things. What we've found though, is that there are certain types of design and a lot of things like test boards, um, arrays of, of objects and so on, where it's just really, really monotonous to do it by hand. And these are the kinds of designs that they have to be done, but humans actually don't even really want to do them. It's just the same thing over and over again. So there's a big gap and a need, and this is where today Quilter does very well and into the future, even better, more advanced things. Quilter AI is uniquely positioned to solve these issues with too much of the busy work, too much of the difficult designs, the test boards, harnesses, uh, bring up boards. One of the major, major issues that engineers have is getting something on the desk as fast as possible in order to bring it up, start developing software, make sure everything works, do the measurements. And uh, we, we found this, this tremendous demand, especially on the design front end, to get something done quickly. The one thing that nobody can make again is time. And so what Quilter AI is doing is giving people more time to do the other things that they need to get done or to work on the kinds of boards that need the creativity and problem solving that currently only a human can do. And, and like I'm in that place, I want to work on the this, this certain types of designs and, and parts of the design that I know I can do that the software is not able to automate. And that takes time. But if I'm gonna get something on my desk, you know, two or three days from now to be able to start testing it because I've got, I've got uh, company funders or, or uh, um, management breathing down my neck to get results and to get something to market quickly. Time is of the essence and time is what tools like Quilter, especially Quilter, will, will bring back to the engineer. One of the issues we find is uh, modern design requires a lot of high, high speed edge rates, uh, fast rise times, and a mix of different technologies all in the same design. Uh, 
a, a, a typical design today will have maybe a microprocessor or a microcontroller, some high-speed memory interfaces, maybe HDMI or, or DPI or LVDS. There's all these different signaling standards and they all require good signal integrity and an awareness of you know, differential pairs, impedance control, etc. So what we do at Quilter is we actually have a database of materials and material information and we use real physics solvers to actually define the impedance profiles and with, with the automation, route things, place the components in an optimal way and route things such that you get good signal integrity, good power integrity. We work a lot with different fabs. We consult with a lot of fabs and work out what are the layer stacks and how can we design in the automation? How can we use what we know about fabrication processes, such as with Sierra, to not only be able to reduce the number of lamination cycles, say, to make, to make this a fast process, uh, but there's all sorts of different factors, right, that like that. So we can make sure that when your design comes into Quilter, we can interpret an, uh, a number of points of information from the schematic. So we don't do the schematic. We don't automate the engineering of it. We start with the schematic and uh, a basic, we could have a partially placed or an unplaced PCB and outline with the net list and some constraints. And we can infer, Quilter can infer uh, where, where there are differential pairs, where there is a requirement for impedance control. Like, is this a USB connection? Is it USB 2.0, which only needs 480 megabits per second and a 85 to 90 ohm diff pair? Or is it ethernet that might be a gigabit or 10 gigabit or two and a half gigabit, but, but need a 100 ohm diff pair? And that information is confirmed by the user and then goes into what we call the compiler, which is essentially the, the automated place and route tool that then tries a bunch of different uh, layer stacks from different uh, manufacturers and with different materials and can find the optimal solution using that uh, reinforcement learning feedback loop. So Quilter AI is very good at automating repetitive placement and and routing tasks just by being AI and being automation. I mean, I don't know how else to put it. If, it if, if there's something that a user would have to do over and over and over again and it gets tedious, um, that's why you want automation, right? It's gonna, it's gonna take those droll, boring parts of the job and do them for you, essentially. And how it does it, the, the underlying algorithms is, is kind of our secret sauce. At Quilter, we're using reinforcement learning. What, what that means is there has to be a set of known rules or constraints for, for design and fabrication up front. And right now, because we can use any layer stack pretty much from any and work with any fabricator, that means we don't have one fixed set of design rules. In a traditional EDA tool like Altium, Cadence, whatever, you, the designer has to build a set of constraints. Now, I'm not saying you, you don't still do that. You do, you do. Today, uh, our current users, they get, they, they give us an Altium file or a KiCad file, they get a KiCad or Altium file back and they still run through their final design rule check before going to manufacturing. Um, but how this automation works with all those requirements and preventing errors is, is really what happens. So rather than run through a big checklist with if then else and flagging errors like a typical DFM tool would do, Quilt is more from the angle of correct by construction. What feeds into it is a known good layer stack with a known good set of constraints for a given fabricator and you can build the board to that. But what's, what's not part of that data set that actually drives the routing engine is a degree of circuit comprehension, understanding the intentionality behind the electronic design. So I mentioned before, 
we can detect if there's diff pairs for USB, for example. And we know, you know, th there are different degrees to which we can do this today versus where we're going to be in the future. We know enough about the design and get confirmation from the user that we can, we can it put the inputs into the routing engine and get the result with the, the diff pairs routed correctly, the uh, high speed or impedance control traces. Um, we're, we're still working on a lot of these things. We're still in early, early stages of beta, of course. So a lot of this stuff is in development now, um, but with reinforcement learning, that's, that's where the key is. So again, we get a, we put, send out a bunch of agents to route and place the board. We get a bunch of results back and then those are graded against a set of rules and constraints and the best results bubble up to the top for the user to choose from whichever one at that point that they prefer the look of. Or they may, they may choose, you know, result two over result one because result two uses only four layers. Result one may be done in six layers and cost more. So at that point, it's the user's choice about that, that trade-off of cost and time. I can definitely share examples. And in fact, we're publishing some on our blog. If you go to quilter.ai and, and look for the blog, you'll find some. At the moment, they're very simple, small boards. But the fact of the matter is, I can have a board routed in two hours that would have taken me two hours to do manually or m much more, maybe a whole day. And we're, we're sent those to manufacturing and bringing them up and showing like everything works perfectly. What it has really done is brought me back time to do other, to be able to get on with doing other tasks. So design for manufacturing is a, is a big deal for every designer and everybody producing software to automate parts of the design. It's no good designing a magical XYZ elevator like in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory if you can't actually build the real thing. So obviously DFM is a big part of it. So we have as part of the algorithm and that reinforcement learning and the ranking system, we have a series of design for manufacturing checks that cover all the basic things that you need for any manufacturable board. So uh, do we have good layer pairs, setups, hole pairs? Do we have appropriate drill spacing from the from the board edge and copper spacing all the normal things if you go to any printed circuit board fabricators website and download their spec sheet or their cap look at their capabilities we internalize those and those go into the algorithm for every layer stack we can route a board to there's a set of those constraints and the board will not reach 100 percent routing completion and violate any one of those constraints. It's just not possible. So today, Quilter AI is a service that's fully online and we currently support Altium natively and KiCad. What that looks like today is people upload their, their design files and Quilter parses what it needs to parse and then does, does the work according to the user's entered constraints. When I say that, I mean there's again the, the set of fabrication constraints for a specific layer stack and the user doesn't necessarily choose those because we're going to send a number of agents out and try a bunch of different ones and see what comes back as optimal there are other other constraints that the user can enter upon uploading their designs as well so today we support KiCad and Altium and when the job's finished and the user chooses a result and they, they can browse and, and rank them and filter them based on different criteria. Then, then they download it and it comes back to them in the same native format that they uploaded it in to begin with. We don't currently have an integration into the desktop CAD tools themselves, although uh, that, that's something we're looking into, whether it's worth investing the time and effort to do that or not, it might be. One of the great things about being a, a fully funded startup, and there's a lot of interest in that, the, the main reason to get funding is to employ the right people and to be able to build what you set out to build and also discover 
uh, new problems along the way that you have a unique skill set with the right talent to solve those problems. And so what we're discovering is a lot of the time um, companies that companies that need something who are willing to use automation today and want to try it, they're often uh, two really two kinds of organization. They either lack PCB design skill, but they want to get something done fast, or they may have the skill, but they don't have enough. And one of the problems we have as an industry is not enough skilled talent. You know, you'll hear it here at PCB West. A lot of the, a lot of the most more experienced people in the industry, like myself, are putting a call out there to younger people to this is a great career. You can make decent money, you can live well, and you can do nice work designing boards. So like get certified, learn how to drive the CAD tools, join the industry. That's still a need. But we also know we can start to solve some of those lack of skilled talent problems using automation. Where this leads is definitely HDI. It's algorithmically, um, there are, there are certain problems that have to be solved with auto routers and parts placement, a lot of it around clearance and positioning. And there's, there's going to be other issues that we need to look at solving as we go too, like thermal management. But for now, working with HDI or more advanced layer stacks is definitely, definitely an enabler. If, if someone's having to use those technologies, it often means the design they're working on is so uh, so big or complex and either way it's going to take a lot of time and effort to get that done and to work with all the trade-offs. So I think that's really going to become as, as things unfold that's going to become a sweet spot for automation of any kind is to help people get those complex designs done much sooner that they would otherwise spend a lot of time in design reviews and rethinking things and wondering, did I do this right? Did I not do it right? And what we can do is, is bring something to the table where we say, we understand with this layer stack and these constraints, and maybe even this specific fabricator or that one, they can do, you know, down to two mil traces reliably on any panel, or they can do two mil or one and a half mil laser drilled vias all day long, no problem. So we can work with that information and knowledge of the materials and what's in the supply chain to actually suggest design solutions that are going to be successful in a, in a shorter time frame.